Saren, I play magic way too much. Okay, um, in this episode, I want to kind of show some uh, things that I do um, that help me win games, some kind of things that I'm thinking about in the game, but kind of just more kind of random tips and things like that. Um, first of all, so I just, I guess I'll start with this brag. I just got Olivia through a pack, amazingly, and I like her so much I got her three times. <laughs> uh, too much of a good thing. But so when you're confronted, confronted is the wrong term, with some crazy board like this, I mean, look at it real quick, and what would you choose? I mean, there's a million things here. I mean, do you choose this match four in the top middle uh, with the black, where I can do that? Do you choose uh, to kind of go up and down here with black? Do you choose just to say, screw it and go with some loyalty? There's no good options here. Um, there's no bad options. I mean, they all, I wish I had a white or red, of course. But, and here's the blue. Um, and then if I do blue, do I do up and down, north, south there? Oh, well, actually, that's what I was going to recommend is to go left to right, because you hopefully saw that there were two draws up here. This one was both green, and that one was both black. And so that actually gave me two draws, and I didn't mean to click through that fast. Um, and here, um, obviously, I could do the black here, the green, but if I do, this is so dumb, but of course I would do that one. But I always am looking for just little things that will... Um, make movement happen. Like I would rather have, instead of doing one swipe that gets two match threes in one transaction, do you know what I mean? I would rather do one match three and then have things drop and then have another match three. And that way there's two chances for things to drop and things to happen. Um, so I don't know, just little things like that. And I kind of want to, hopefully we'll, I'll come across a few here that will work. Um, uh, here, pretty obvious choice. I'm going to match these uh, uh, loyalty gems so that it cascades. There's one drop. So that way, it's, see, it was kind of two things. Uh, so I don't know. Just kind of uh, I'm going to have more tips coming up. Hopefully, they're, um, hopefully some of them are usable by you. Uh, thanks, guys. Oh, another one is I set timers for things. And you can see that I have seven minutes till my next free pack. So um, I try to do those external things so I don't forget, because I always get wrapped up in the game. Actually, I'm right back. <clears throat> I haven't done anything, but I think I'm going to end this in about, you know, just a few turns here. Uh, but I wanted to show to, uh, real quickly after this is over, about how I joined this quick battle. And here's the end of the match. So you saw a whole match. So you can kind of see, obviously this is the exception, but this deck is really fast. And with quick battles, I use Nahari. And I've only used Nahari for a long time now. I like her better than Koth. And I try to get a deck that's going to win as fast as possible. I have level 60, so I get six points. Some people say level 49 is best because you're fighting against people with... 50 life instead of full life, like 100 or whatever the average one is. And that does get it go, make it go faster. I choose to do full strength, and then I can use all the options too as far as uh, as many creatures as I want and that kind of stuff. Um, this always takes too long. But so here I've used um, only Nahari for a long time, and I have a win streak of 288, so it's working well. Um, and it is... 2.37 in top right, and my quick battle ends at 6 o'clock. I am ranked 168, and I've only won three matches to get 18 points. How'd that happen with only three hours and 22 minutes left? It's because I start my quick battles um, at the end. And actually, you can go to the top rank here. Um, I don't know when you're doing quick battles, but if you, know, you have 144 points, if you start it with two days to go, that's not going to get you in the top 10, at least not with three hours to go. Um, so just kind of a heads up, uh, that's how I do the quick battles. This way I uh, very commonly am in the top 150. And I really just shoot for the top 150. Um, the Origins pack is very nice, so I'm not going to say no to it, but I'm not going to fight super hard for it. I've actually never came in first or even in the top 10 um, because I kind of think that two through 150 um, are about the same price. Oh, uh, I will come up back soon with some more stuff.
Hey guys, this is Aaron. Okay, I'm back. So uh, I'm on the Magic the Gathering website, just the Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering website. Coming soon, um, all these different um, set of cards. Kaladesh is out now and all that. So Modern Masters Edition is going to come out soon. And let's kind of look at this. Very top screen, March 17th. It's going to come out with Modern Masters. Well, I'm recording this on the 8th, I think. And so that's a week away, 10 days away. Um, and if we kind of scroll down, it says it's going to have 249 cards released on the 17th and Magic Online release date, March 22nd. So that is, again, two weeks from now. Um, so just kind of a heads up, there's going to be some new cards coming out um, that's really going to change things. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go back here. And assuming that the Modern Masters... That might be what they're doing with the um, new, uh, what are they called, magical cards or something. But um, if they're not, then this dual decks, mine's, you know, is coming out March 31st. So they are coming out with new cards soon. So when I am in the game and I um, am in the vault and I'm thinking, should I open my packs? Should I not open my packs? I, right now, even before this big update was announced, which is coming out tomorrow, Thursday, I think, I um, am not opening those. Uh, that's what I have saved. And I've only been saving, I haven't been saving that long, really. Um, because I'm saving them for a few reasons. One, when the new set comes out, this is the biggest reason, there won't be any exclusive cards. So right now there are I think there's eight exclusives. There's five on that page um, and three on this page. So there's eight exclusives that I can't even get and obviously they're selling this one now but this is actually the card I've been waiting for to even open my packs. So there's no reason for me to um, open my packs when um, I don't need to. Like, I have 52 of the 101, um, and I haven't opened any packs. I've just kind of gotten my rares. Um, you can see that I have you know, three-fourths of the rares, too. So I'm not missing out on that much. And by saving them, I'm going to have an opportunity to get those other ones. So... Um, that's just kind of another thing that I do that I think um, well, helps me. Uh, so you guys may or may not want to do that. Hi, guys. I'm back. Okay, I want to show something here. Um, in the bottom right there, I have a match five in white. Um, I don't have any supports in this deck, but let's pretend I had a support, and I put it near the top, and it cost five or six to get out. And then I... Um, did my match five, and it came out. Well, now it's out there, and I have another turn. And let's pretend it was on one of these left top kind of red gems. Then I would have taken a counter off. One thing I think is really important is that if you know you're going to get a match five to not play certain things or to play certain things, you know, um, but here, it would have been a minor mistake, and only 10% of the time, it would have hurt me. But it would have hurt me. And so, I just kind of want to point that out uh, as something that statistically um, is the right thing to do. Not play supports if you know you're going to have another turn. Okay? Hey guys, I'm back. Okay. I know this is so obvious, but when I kind of see this, I see the blue uh, four right here in the middle, and I'm like, oh, I can just match those three. I always look below, and I see that the three black ones here will work. I know this is a real obvious thing, but I always take just extra half a second to look below where I'm going. And that was an example, too, of when I matched something, and it created, it dropped, and then it had a chance to set, and then it matched again, and set, and it matched again. And so just little things like that. That might be my last thing on this video. But I just kind of wanted to point out how we do matchmaking. Well, actually, let's look at 
one more thing. I guess my only match here is the whites, but if I was going to match like this green set on the bottom right, or I was going to match this green set, kind of the middle left, which one would you do? Let's pretend you're only looking at those two greens. Which one's better? Um, well, I'm going to match these ones because I see that right here I have that blue and that blue. So I have a one in six chance that that's going to be line up just right, that the blue is going to fall into place. And that's the kind of thing I'm always looking at. And here, if it comes down, there's no one in six chance that will happen. So um, just little things. Um, if I can get like right there, that wasn't exactly what I thought would match, but it was just, if you play the odds, you're going to get a little bit better, which is actually how I think you win in this game is that the you match more gems than the computer does. And by matching more gems than the computer does, you get up more cards and you win. And that's why the player wins more often than the opponent. Thanks, guys.